that those who will be tested the most are those who are loved more by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next narration says, the Anbiya, the Prophets of Allah are tested the most. And then those who are closest to them in example, and then those who are next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. So when you have problems in your life, the way to ease the difficulties, to read the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I make a dua to Allah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, the people who are suffering across the globe today, Ya Allah, and all the sufferings we face as well, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, grant us ease, Ya Allah. The seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let it be a means of the comforting of our hearts and souls going through the pages. Let us learn lessons that soothe our souls, that extinguish the flame that may be burning within our systems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I need to pause there for a moment. Why is it the case? Most of us don't even know how to divorce in Islam. And people think you just dish out three talaqs and walk away. Never ever do that. That is worse than a hooligan, worse than an animal. It is very sinful to dish out one, two, three. Very sinful. If you would want, you need to be calm. You need to relax. People say, I gave my talaq in anger. Well, what do you expect? Do you think people would now be sitting with coffee and say, my wife, I divorce you. Would that happen? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us people who are foolish. When angry, watch your tongue. Control yourself. Calm down. If you really cannot get along, one talaq, more than enough. You don't need to issue the second. You don't. Not at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Then if you want to get back, you can get back. No need to marry someone else and so on. Why is it that the third time she cannot get back to you? Because three whole times you tried so hard and she couldn't appreciate you or you could not appreciate her. She will never be able to live with you unless she has gone to someone else and has had an opportunity to compare you with someone else to the degree that she could not get along with him and was divorced from him. And now she says, let me go back to that man. He was much better. There were only 10 things wrong with him. This guy, there's 100 things wrong with him. Now it's, there's a chance of it working. So this is the logic behind it. Whereas we think, no, well, you know what? There was a man in Britain who told me once that, you know, I used to do halalas. You know what's a halala? For your information, it's haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed the one whom a halala is done for and the one who does it. Where people divorce one, two, three, and they have divorced their wives, they want to get back. So they tell their friend, you know what? Let's work around this. You marry her for one night, tomorrow morning you divorce her again. When she's finished her idda, she'll get back to me. So the man says, Astaghfirullah. He says, I used to do this. And he says, until one day, oh, there was such a princess who came in my direction, I refused to divorce her. He says, now she's my wife, I've got so many children with her. Subhanallah. Allah protect us. Yet, that is jahiliyyah. Allah curses those who do that. Why do we not control our tongues? For what? Why do we have to be so foolish and then run to the ulama for help when we have shot ourselves three times in the chest with our own gun, the bullet piercing straight through the heart and we still want to resuscitate? The ignorance that was the time of jahiliyyah before Islam. They divorced as they wished, took back. So the woman was always hanging. She didn't know whether she was coming or going. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now if you take a look at the Kaaba, it's important for us to make mention of the building of the Kaaba. We said the first time it was ever built was at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And it had a semicircular on one side. The second time was this Quraysh, time of Quraysh, where they did not have enough wealth to complete it. So they had it like a cube and they lifted it much higher than it was at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. They lifted it to 18 feet high and they had six wooden pillars inside which were holding the roof. So they actually put a roof on it now and thereafter it stayed like that until the time of Yazid ibn Muawiyah when Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu built the Kaaba again and it had been uh, damaged and thereafter when he built it again what did he do he built it according to the original building where he added the semicircular once again what Quraysh had wanted to do imagine what love Allah had had for the people of Quraysh 
for raising from their midst a Nabi, a precious jewel, a person who would come and change the whole globe. Subhanallah. Imagine the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who were the household of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who accepted his message instantaneously, as we will see a little bit later. And this is why we say at that moment, what had happened on earth was something changing the entire earth. Allah blessed the inhabitants of the earth by sending Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time, the period of darkness where women were being oppressed from left to right, east to west, north to south, everywhere there were wars, there was feud, the order of the day. What was it? It was chaos, oppression. Those who were strong ruled, those who were weak were downtrodden. They were oppressed and enslaved at times. Three men were enslaved just because they were not recognized or they did not have a clan to protect them against the tyrants. Now, if you take a careful look, he used to go every day and meditate in seclusion. We are all encouraged to engage in ibadah and worship Allah in seclusion as well. And do you know what? Those particular 10 days are actually a sunnah to engage in i'tikaf. I'tikaf meaning you sit in seclusion in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pondering over your weakness, how you can correct yourself, how you can be improved and you worship Allah alone and you increase your tilawa, recitation of the Quran, understanding of it, your salah and so on. May Allah make us from those who can engage in this i'tikaf. Hadith is hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu, which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whilst I was walking, I looked up and I saw the angel Jibreel in his original form. You know what the original form is? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Jibreel many times, but most of the times he was in the form of a man, a very handsome man. And when he came in the form of a man, there were times when his companions have also seen him. Like the ones he came and he sat with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he was asking him some questions. And then when he went away, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum say that we saw this man coming. He had white clothes, he had black hair, we, nobody knew him, which means he was not from anywhere near, but he looked like he had not undertaken any journey whatsoever and he came in and he sat with his knees right in front of with the knees of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam utmost respect he's asking questions when the answer comes he says yes you are right and they say we were surprised how come this man is asking and he's also saying you are right imagine someone asks you how old are you and you say 50 and he says you're right Allahu Akbar he said well why did you ask me Allahu Akbar so when he went away Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, do you know who that was? They said, Allah and his messenger know best. That was Jibreel. He came to you to teach you your religion. So when he saw this angel, he immediately was in awe once again. And he was concerned again. He ran back to his home. And as he is running, asking for cover, the verses are then revealed. They came down. That was now an instruction. Let's go through the meaning of it. Ya ayyuhal muddattir, O you who is enveloped in garments. He was already enveloped in garments, covered in garments. Qum fa'andir, get up and warn. So he was now instructed to deliver the message. Get up. And you know to get up means be brave. Get up. Don't worry. Allah is there. If someone tells you get up and walk. Or get up and tell the people. It's much more stronger than a person who tells you just sit down and quietly just mention this stand up eloquence it is a message a powerful message get up and warn from this we know the sunnah when muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to deliver his sermons 90 percent of the time if not more he was standing unless there was a reason for him to sit it was that method for three years he called people quietly how did he call them quietly he started off with those closest to him. None of them rejected. Amazing. Who was closest? His wife. She had already accepted. She was the first one who accepted. As we said, Khadija binti Khuwailid radiallahu anha. Amazing. She was the first to accept. And thereafter, who was next? Well, his cousin was a young boy. 
in his own house because Abu Talib, who was his uncle, had many children and he couldn't really afford much in terms of food and drink. So they began to look after some of his children and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to take Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and to keep him with him. And he used to feed with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and accompany him. And he was the first from amongst these young boys. Looks like the video still continued after this, but otherwise, big shout out to the person that suggested this. Uh, Mufti Mike made mention of uh, people that uh, follow God or worship God uh, being the ones that suffer the most. Uh, the thing about suffering is it never lasts, nothing ever lasts. Sometimes God is preparing us for a better life. So, whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, know that there's something better coming ahead another thing was um holding your tongue when you're upset angry or whatever the case is we find ourselves in situations where we say things that we don't mean how about just keeping quiet letting yourself calm that's when communicating what you feel instead of saying all the horrible things in this world calling people all sorts of names in this world only for you to come um retract them later it doesn't make sense because sometimes you say things that you actually mean when you're upset so let's control ourselves with you the thing is we have a choice and we can actually do better than we're doing right now like i said this video just had a lot of things to talk about so many things that one can touch on another thing was divorce and i don't know how people take divorce many people take it as i don't care i can divorce as many times as i want for others they don't believe in divorce i don't think divorce is okay but like i said it varies from person to person that's what i'm saying let's be able to control ourselves and have valid reasons for doing certain things also we shouldn't forget that we're never alone despite even if today you feel alone in the world god is always there for you that's one thing that you should never forget if i haven't touched on any point feel free to start the conversation in the comment section below i'll be more than glad to respond to you and i hope you guys are doing all right make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video